Thirteen is a first-person shooter developed and published by Ubisoft in 2003. Coming in the era after Half-Life, when shooters began to shift from the fast-paced gameplay to a slower, more story-oriented approach, Thirteen follows suit with a heavy narrative focus. Shooters from this early era, before the likes of Call of Duty and Halo, which further changed the genre, often go underlooked and underappreciated in retrospect, and it seems Thirteen is no exception. The first thing you'll notice about this game is its visual presentation. Being based off of a comic book, the game successfully emulates the comic book style in its design. Don't be fooled though, the visual motif doesn't just start and end at the game's use of shaders. Practically every part of this game is designed with this style in mind. Menus and level start screens are segmented into uneven sized blocks, evoking comic panels. Effects such as explosions or headshots are marked with bold text, identical to the way comic books visualize sound effects. And dialogue is shown in speech bubbles rather than subtitles. The comic book stylizations also have gameplay effects, as panels will sometimes sometimes show up on the screen to show information such as if a guard has seen you or not, and enemy positions can be inferred from text pop-ups showing the tap-tap of their walking. By fully committing to the style, the game doesn't just look like a comic, it feels like one as well. This is probably the best aspect of the game, although I should probably mention that the font most commonly used throughout the game is Comic Sans. Obviously the game did come out in 2003, back when the font was just considered the comic book font and hadn't been used on gravestones but it does look a little ugly in hindsight. 13's gameplay, however, is a mixed bag. The combat is fairly simplistic, get behind cover and either aim for the head or start spraying. There are some times when the game doesn't really give any options for cover, but mostly it's alright. Maybe it's just my playstyle, but long range combat seemed much more advantageous than close combat, and as such I practically never used the shotgun. Switching between guns is probably the worst part though. Each of the number keys is bound to one of the weapons, so when you press that key you will switch to it. You can also use the scroll wheel to manually shift through your whole arsenal. That's normal, that's expected, it's practically the industry standard. The problem comes when you have more than 10 weapons. In 13, you have 15, meaning that 5 of the game's weapons can only be equipped by scrolling through, and can't be accessed with the number keys. Hypothetically. I mean, Half-Life also had 15 weapons and they found a way to make it work, but whatever. This could at least be forgiven if the weapons were laid out in a remotely sensible order. Weapons that you get all the time, like the crossbow or assault rifle, are forced to hang around in the 5s or 6s, meaning you need to reach over from your movement keys to equip them, or require you to scroll over. Meanwhile, the 44 Special, which you get in maybe 4 of the game's missions, is drawn with a 3 key, despite the fact that you barely ever even use it. The sniper rifle and rocket launcher also occupy some of the latter end keys, but still steal those keys from guns that appear much more frequently. It's a fairly big thing as well, as the game seriously emphasizes switching between one's available weapons, both with slow reload times and various scenarios for enemies to attack in. The game's stealth system, however, is actually much better. Stealth is usually given as an option at the start of a mission, but sometimes it's mandatory. It, too, is fairly basic, but it differentiates itself from most stealth systems by focusing heavily on ranged combat. In most missions, you start with this scoped crossbow thing, which is used for stealth, and so a lot of the time, stealth turns into picking off enemies from a distance. It's pretty easy, but can sometimes prove a challenge when the player is faced with groups of enemies and needs to time their shots. Other than that, stealth can also play out in a more typical fashion, with the player creeping around mazes, knocking out guards. Once again, this isn't too bad, and it's pretty satisfying to slowly eliminate your targets. Similar to the combat, it's not very deep, but it's probably the most challenging part of the game. It can be annoying when you're trying to knock enemies out though, because the key to do so is E, unless you're holding an object like a chair or a shovel to knock the enemy out with. Then it's a mouse click, like you'd expect. And if you do a standard left click without anything in your hands, you'll just throw a punch, alerting whoever it is you're trying to knock out. And if you press E while holding an item, it'll do nothing. Also, when you're close enough to an enemy, they'll turn around and face you, meaning that if you do press E with an item in your hand, the guard will practically always see you and the object can't knock out alerted enemies, meaning that regardless of whether you're carrying an item or not, any missed input will result in the guard being alerted immediately. It's not as big a thing later on when you get used to the mechanics, but early on it can be really annoying. 
The game's story is probably its weakest aspect. It starts off fairly intriguing. You play as an amnesiac who's been accused of assassinating the president, a gang of mercenaries is constantly following you, and you have the number 13 tattooed onto you. You keep having flashbacks to what happened, and a woman named Jones is assisting you. But then the game reveals what happened to you and who you truly are, and it's a cool twist and it's interesting, but after it's revealed you kinda just think, huh. Guess that makes sense, and carry on as if nothing happened. You also pick up along the way that you're trying to take down a cult known as the Twenty, of which you are presumably the 13th member, and that part of the story is... well, it's fine, I guess. They never really feel like that big of a threat in the end, especially since by the end you're being backed by the whole US government. I don't want to go too much into plot detail, but you get the idea. It's just a little underwhelming in the end. A lot of the problems with the story, though, come down to the fact that it doesn't have a proper ending. There's this big thing made about the leader of the cult, number one, and his identity, and in the end it's heavily insinuated who it is, but then the game just ends on a cliffhanger. I feel like not having a proper ending really damages the overall story. Overall, 13 is a game with many flaws. The gameplay ranges from lackluster to simply annoying, and the story goes unresolved. But despite all of that, I struggle to fully indict the game as simply not worth your time. The game's ability to draw you into the world of a comic is really unseen, even in games that try and emulate the comic book feel. So if you're up for some good enough gameplay and brilliant visuals, and you're not too bothered by story, maybe give this old game another shot.